Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Test Manager Certification. We are all done with all the tutorials to cover the chapter two that is test management. And in today's tutorial, we are getting into the sample questions from this section. Well, to begin with, of course, the very first thing is to understand the sample questions pattern, what kind of examination questions you can expect and what would be the head count of the same. Now, if you see right on, on your screen, you do have the list of all the possible topics which we have covered. And as a part of it, we have learned a lot of things uh, to be remembered. And there are certain number of questions which are distributed with the K level that which topic will be at K4, which one will be at K3 and which one will be at K2. Don't forget, there is no K1 in the advanced level certifications. So at least K2 will be there. And uh, there are a few topics, for example, 2.3.5 which does not have a specific number of question. Similarly, for other two topics, that is 2.7.1, 2.9.1. But they say that at least one question will be there from any of these three topics, so you need to prepare. Does not mean that you can skip this topic, but at least one question will be there from combine these three topics and rest all is distributed. So what we see here is minimum 25 questions will be coming from this chapter in your examination. So make sure that you put a lot of effort and this is the longest chapter of the syllabus. So make sure that you are pretty clear with all the topics. It requires a lot of patience and attention to understand, but believe me, you have 25 marks with you in this particular chapter, or probably more, not 25 marks actually, because the options which require selection of more than one option, then of course they have greater scores for that. So keep an eye on that and make sure that you have got all the understanding of different topics and then uh, go to the sample questions. To kick off, we are taking the very first and simple question here that is from the risk-based testing. Which of the following statements best describes how risk-based testing respond to the risk? Now, of course, you need to recall your learning from risk-based testing, first of all, that what exactly it is all about and how do you respond to these risks when you have identified them. So you should quickly recall that, okay, there is something called as risk identification, risk assessment, risk mitigation, and risk management. Risk identification is about identifying the risk and risk mitigation is responding to these identified risks, correct? So that's your answer. But let's look at the options here. A, when tests find defects, they increase the quality of the system under test. Okay, certainly good, but let's look at either options before we get into the details of this. B, functional testing addresses product risk while non-functional testing addresses quality risk. For your kind information at this point, product risk is equal to quality risk. So there's no difference in that. So this option can be very well declared null and void and should not be spent a lot of time on. C, the test manager determines which test levels to apply based on project risk. Okay, test manager determines which test levels to be applied. Uh, you know, basically that comes to be product risk. Do help determine which test levels and but so do the product risk as well. So it's just not specific to project and this is not the best answer that could be. Similarly for the A, if you look at A, it says uh, uh, when tests find defects, they increase the quality of system under test. That's very good. That's true. But some non-functional risk may be mitigated early, but some may be mitigated later in the life cycle. So it's just not about finding the defects and that does not help you to just deal completely with the risk-based testing to respond to that. But when it comes to the option D, that is the test team designs, implements, and execute test to mitigate the quality risk, that's the approach. That's the approach what you follow in order to mitigate the risk which you have identified earlier and you try to make sure that you know the executions does not show any kind of failures. If they show any kind of failures, you do realize that you have found them as a part of quality defects and resolve them. So the right answer here is D, the test team designs, implements, and executes tests to mitigate quality risk. And this we have covered as a part of our tutorials during the session. The next question is two, and here I'm taking a different example that you can also expect uh, the comparison between the approaches, and they may ask you to do match the following. And do, do remember that I'm not covering a lengthier scenario-based questions just because it will take a lot of time to discuss and, and analyze and understand. Don't forget this examination is for three hours, so do not just expect that I will be doing lengthy scenario-based questions here because reading the scenario itself will take around 
15 to 20 minutes of time then going to the options referring that back so it will definitely take at least 30 to 40 minutes of time to discuss and help you understand that how to solve it but don't worry the more important thing is the tutorials which you have covered so you can go through that and look at any of the scenario based question and this does not mean that i'm only covering simple questions from the examination does not mean that scenario based question will not be there it will be there it's just that time constraint i cannot get into all the depth right here during this particular tutorial okay coming to the question number two consider the following test strategies so you do need to remember and recall your strategies we have seven standard strategies which we have followed and we have learned about we are just talking about one line definitions to do a match the following concept here and we have got four strategies with us analytical methodical process and consultative it's a very straightforward thing you just have to remember what each one of them does and then where it is the best applicable and you apply to that so we have got on the other side on the right side that what are the test activities example and uh, we just do have to do the match so which of the following correctly uh, matches test strategy with the example of a test activity appropriate for that strategy so let's start matching them i think number one let's start with analytical which is risk-based testing and the risk-based testing basically involves uh, executing the highest risk test as early as possible so analytical uh, other name of that is synonymous risk-based testing as well and of course when it comes to risk-based testing we must talk about mitigating the risk and the approaches related to the risk so c is the only option on the right side not the bottom the right side in the table the example of the test activity that executing the highest risk test as early as possible is associated to the strategy analytical two methodical test strategy that is going to be acceptance criteria for a user story which is methodical specific like agile this happens only in agile that you write acceptance criteria for the user story but does not happen in any other methodology so of course method methodical test strategy basically stands for method specific activities which you perform c process compliant test strategy now we are left with only two options a and d let's see so process compliant should go to uh, clicking through all the navigational link on a web page that's its process compliant because process compliant is all about the navigation or process within the application and you completely stick to that so if your process is working fine your field or your application is validated so d and of course now we are remaining with four that is consultative test strategy testing a user provided list of internet process so user provided that means a consultant will provide you the list of activities to be performed and you just strictly uh, strictly follow that and deliver the same well in that case the right answer here with this particular match the following is d that is one goes to c analytical goes to c methodical goes to b that is defining acceptance criteria three uh, that is process goes to d and uh, consultative goes to a so the right answer is d let's look at one more quick question here and of course this is a small scenario driven question but definitely will help you understand what could be the possibilities but this is very very simple because i wanted to keep a guy on the time here for the tutorial but you will definitely have a longer scenario as well uh, number three, assume you are a test manager on project which is following a agile life cycle. The testing strategy is a blend of risk-based testing, process compliant, and reactive testing. Developers are following known agile best practices, including automated unit testing and continuous integrations. You are estimating the system test effort required for a particular iteration by your test team. Which of the following statements correctly describe how you should carry out estimation in this scenario? So this question is completely from a uh, test estimation point of view. And here they're asking you to select two options. So whenever you see options more than four, please look back into the question because when you have more than four options given to you, then they are at least asking you to select two or more. So be careful if you go wrong with any one, your answer is wrong. Or if you don't pick other one, you still are wrong. Okay, you don't get any marks for that. Okay, so I hope we first got the understanding of the scenario that well, number one, it is working in Agile and we are using a testing strategy which is a blend of three different approaches and over that we are trying to do uh, automated unit test and continuous integration which is very common in Agile methodology and uh, this time we are doing the test estimation. So the question is from estimation. Let's start with the option A. Consider the average effort required for identified risk in the past iteration. 
Of course, that could be one of the possibilities to talk about because uh, when it comes to the estimation, because uh, considering historical uh, values and averages for estimation is one which is recognized as an estimated technique. So if you remember from the tutorial, we have discussed that brainstorming and several other things which you can make use of. But more than that, of course, the past experience, what you had with certain recognized risk will definitely add a lot of value to do a exact or accurate estimation. So A seems to be one as right option. B, allocate time box test session for each identified test charter. Of course, in Agile, we make use of exploratory testing a lot. So test charter is actually a part of the exploratory testing. So instead of giving you directly that you should follow exploratory testing, they are making use of indirect way of asking you the same thing. So they are saying that here that time box test session is the approach of conducting exploratory testing for each identified test charter. So test charter is also the documentation of exploratory testing. So you should know everything about exploratory in order to pick them up. And of course, exploratory is other way around called as agile methodology or other way around agile methodology is inherently called as exploratory testing. So see, B also looks uh, pretty fine uh, to meet the expectation of the estimation. C, estimate that most defects will be found during the system test execution. I think that's that's. Uh, little different because you cannot make such statements as as we have discussed as a part of our syllabus developers following known agile best practices will remove as many as half the defects prior to system testing so you don't really have to you know wait for the system testing because you spend uh, you do have inverted test pyramid here right in agile compared to the traditional approaches and you do a lot of unit test then little less integration and little less system testing so you basically expect more defects to be found before system testing, not during system testing, because don't forget at any point of time that which methodology they are using. If they mention Agile, we do a lot of unit testing compared to system. But if you're doing traditional, you do more system testing compared to unit testing. So C is not correct. D, include effort to create detailed test work or product documentation. I think everyone is aware Agile is all about creating brief documentation, not detailed documentation. So that's completely non-selectable and the last option e assume that system test can reuse unit test data and environment that again sounds a little interesting to look into because there's nothing in the scenario to make this reuse necessary or likely which is not at all relevant to the scenario so this is not going to help us in terms of estimation okay so you know three things to be related number one that you are a test manager doing estimation second you are following agile and third, you are following a blend of certain things here. Okay, the approaches. The three topics most together to ask you one question. So that's how your other questions will be. And just keep an eye on the important terminologies, words which they mention in the scenario, and then pick up the right answer. So the right answer here is A and B. A, consider the average effort required for identified risk in the past iteration. And B, allocate time box test sessions for each identified test charter. Well, team, that was all from the sample questions from the chapter two. Of course, you do have more. If you get stuck, do let me know at any point of time. I can definitely help you and assist you with your preparation. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to assist you and answer your questions. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video, team, and happy learning.